This is Your Max Podcast without any pants. Pent up demand for the new iPhone 4S resulted with Apple selling more than three times as many phones in October as in any of the previous three months in the UK, according to data from Kantar World Panel ComTech. Data shows that Apple's iPhone took 42.8% of UK smartphone sales in October alone, ahead of all Android sales, which took 35% in the same period. Smartphones made up 69.8% of sales over the three months, meaning 44.8% of the British population now owns a smartphone. The Guardian's calculations suggest that Apple's sales jumped nearly fourfold in October as the iPhone 4S was released. Now, Tim Cook, Apple's chief executive, complained that ahead of the launch, sales had slowed down substantially because people were waiting for the expected launch of the new iPhone. For those three months, figures show the iPhone share of sales dropping to just 18.5%. An astonishing 75% of new iPhone 4S owners previously owned an iPhone. Most of these loyalists tend to own previous generation devices, such as 3G or 3GS models. However, 14% previously owned an iPhone 4, demonstrating that quite a few people bought themselves out of their contracts just to get their hands on the iPhone 4S. Clearly, the upgraded processor, camera, and the unveiling of Siri was enough to generate excitement among the Apple community. And what of Black Friday, you ask? Well, although Apple is typically loath to share sales figures until it announces quarterly earnings, a new report suggests that the iPhone had a huge day on Black Friday. And although sales across Apple's product line were strong, the company's MacBook Air was an especially hot item. Citing a source, 9to5Mac reports that it has obtained a screenshot of Apple's retail inventory system that shows record Black Friday sales. According to its source, Apple had expected sales to be more than four times greater than on a typical Friday. Supposedly, the company was able to beat that forecast by 7 o'clock p.m. Apple wasn't the only company to see strong sales on Black Friday either. Comscore announced that U.S. consumers spent $816 million online, jumping 26% compared to Black Friday last year. In addition, Amazon has announced that sales of its Kindle family on Black Friday quadrupled those the company generated on the same day last year. Ladies and gentlemen, let the rumor mongering commence. Barclays Capital Analyst Ben Reitzes sent a note to investors that Apple may introduce two brand new iPad models in the first quarter of 2012. One would be the rumored iPad 3 with a retina display and the other would be a lower-priced iPad 2 model, perhaps dubbed the iPad 2S. Failing that, Reitzes says Apple may sell the current iPad 2 at a much cheaper price point alongside a regular-priced iPad 3. He anticipates a new product launch as early as March. And now, on to the iPhone 5. A larger screen for the new iPhone may be in the works. That would put the Apple device in line with the majority of Google Android phones. A 4-inch LCD panel would be an increase of half an inch on the current iPhone 4S and compare more favorably with top-selling devices, such as the 4.2-inch Samsung Galaxy S2 and the Motorola Razr 4.3-inch screen. The change would also be in line with reports that Apple co-founder Steve Jobs was working on a radical redesign of the iPhone up until very shortly before his death earlier this year. Conflicting rumors, however, have suggested that the iPhone 5 may adopt either a new teardrop shape or simply be an enlarged iPhone 4S. iLounge claims that the new model will be 8mm longer and use an aluminum metal case, citing rumors from Digitimes. A March launch has been suggested for the iPhone by a number of blogs who have also suggested it for the iPad 3. Yet others claim that Apple could make a rare announcement at February's Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. And throwing fire on the rumors is that the latest iOS software contains references to a new iPad, iPhone, and Apple TV. 
And now from the Department of Irony comes this story. The science fiction novel Fahrenheit 451, which describes a dystopian future in which the U.S. has outlawed reading and firemen burn books, has been published as an e-book despite Ray Bradbury's its author's dislike of the format, reports the BBC. Mr. Bradbury's agent said the rights for the author's book had been close to expiring and the publisher had insisted the new contract include e-book rights. As late as last year, Mr. Bradbury remained firmly opposed to the idea of his book appearing as a digital title. Quote, I was approached three times during the last year by internet companies wanting to put my books on an electronic reading device, he told the Los Angeles Times in 2010. Quote, I said to Yahoo, prick up your ears and go to hell, end quote. He also complained about the spread of modern technology. However, Mr. Bradbury's agent said the deal had become unavoidable. We explained the situation to him that a new contract wouldn't be possible without ebook rights, Michael Congdon said. He understood and gave us the right to go ahead. A definite case of man bites dog. Truth Triumphs Fiction! You know, technology has changed our lives in many, many ways we could not have foreseen. Here's an example. A man and a teenage boy have been arrested in Ohio in connection with a plot to murder job seekers. How? By responding to advertisements on Craigslist. The two suspects are a 52-year-old man and a 16-year-old boy, both from Akron, Ohio. A man from South Carolina who accepted a job as a farmhand reported to police that he had a cocked gun pointed at the back of his head but escaped with just a wound in his arm. But the day had another surprise. Cadaver dogs were brought to the property where they uncovered a hand-dug grave apparently intended for the man who escaped, but the body of a Florida man was found in another shallow grave nearby. The cause of death for the Florida man is not known. Quote, we brought in cadaver dogs thinking that a possibility that the person that was advertising on Craigslist and lured this guy down here may very well have lured someone else to the same area, end quote, the sheriff told the AP. Well, our hunch was correct. I never thought I'd say this, but all of a sudden I'm not that afraid of Zuckerberg. People of Earth, I have a problem. Now, those who know me well would say that I have several, but we're going to stick with one today. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas for the Apple television, and I'm wondering if I should write a letter to Santa. Here's the thing. I don't think I believe in the Apple television, the full-on TV set from Apple that Piper Jaffrey analyst Gene Munster has gone on about for years. To his credit, he's always, or at least as long as I can remember, held that the full set wouldn't hit until 2012, just in time for the world to end if we buy the Mayan calendar. Those are on discount right now, by the way, since most of the pages have been torn out. But as we approach his end-of-time TV timeline, others are taking up the call, and Wall Street has slowly gone from, did you hear what Mixed Up Munster said, to, well, you know Gene Munster's been saying for a while now, to, Apple's putting out a TV by the end of next year. The first time I heard Apple television set talk that I can remember was back in January of 2008. A friend and fellow podcaster said he thought that that would be the one more thing that Apple would announce at the Macworld keynote the next day. Yeah, remember those? I won't say my friend's name because he was wrong, and also at the time I thought he was a loon. When Munster started talking about an Apple television set around the same time, I felt I had to take the idea seriously. For at least 28 seconds. I decided I didn't believe, for a few reasons, all the way through the last couple of weeks. My reasons? Number one, TVs are expensive. While Apple has had a reputation for premium pricing for decades, it's not as true as it used to be. Apple's consumer products are about on par with everyone else's as far as price goes, with the exception of the Amazon Kindle Fire versus the iPad. Number two, everyone who wants a TV has one. People will buy a new tablet without giving it much thought. They'll even line up for them. Same goes for iPods, and even cell phones, with recent findings suggesting that a decent number of people will go so far as to break their current mobile contract if the phone being offered tickles the biggest part of their fancy. 
When's the last time a TV came out for which people were willing to throw away or replace their old TV? And when's the last time you saw anybody stand in line for a television? If Apple weren't already in computers, it's hard to see them getting into them today. TV seems like a lot harder sell to me, especially when we hear what Mr. Munster thinks an Apple TV will be. But we'll get to that in a bit. Number three, TVs are kind of sort of cratering right now. People aren't buying the ones that are out there unless they find them at some sort of bargain basement Black Friday kind of price. Best Buy has cut its earnings expectations for the year because people aren't buying TVs the way everyone thought they would. Glassmakers, the guys who make the screens for TVs, have lowered expectations for the year because TV builders aren't building TVs the way they thought they would because people aren't buying TVs the way everyone thought they would. And number four, TV is crap. It just is. The Real Housewives of Edmonton, So I Married a Fifth Grader, Are You Smarter Than a Chimp? I know Steve Jobs told his biographer that he'd finally cracked the connected television thing, but if it doesn't include a Mad Men channel, well, the prettiest TV in the world is still just an electric box of poo. Or a box of electric poo. Not that I don't watch it. I regularly beat the contestants on Are You Smarter Than a Chimp from the comfort of my own couch. As I become more strident in rants against the idea of an Apple television, our man Munster becomes more excited. Speaking this week at Business Insider's Ignition Future of Media conference, Munster told attendees that if they were thinking of buying a television, they should wait. That's how sure he is Apple is releasing a television relatively soon. It'll be a full-fledged TV set, not an external gadget, he says except it won't be a TV set. Munster thinks Apple will make TVs in a range of sizes, eschewing the company's usual one-size-fits-all approach. Part of Apple's goal here, according to Mr. M, will be to appeal to young Apple fanatics who can't afford or don't have room for a 50-inch flat screen. Though he seems to be forgetting the part where those young people are used to watching videos on screens the size of an iPhone, iPad, or some sort of Mac. But that's me talking, not him. He thinks the average Apple television will cost twice as much as a comparable competitor TV. So a TV from Sony that would cost 800 bucks? Yeah, the same size from Apple would cost 1600 That's apparently where he stopped caring about the young Apple fanatics who can't afford big-ticket items. Munster says the magic of Apple's TV will be a seamless integration with other Apple devices and services, controllable either by a standard remote supplied by Apple or via an iOS remote for iThings, or via Siri. And it'll have apps, and games, and access to iCloud. It'll be the first TV that thinks the way you do. You'll still need a regular cable subscription, he says. It'll be out for holidays of 2012. Unicorn tears to power it sold separately. I'm sorry, I can't temper my derision. And yet, here it is, nearing Christmas for the Apple television. We each hit an age where we're deciding once and for all about the truth of Santa Claus. And in that cusp year, the one where we're pretty sure we know the truth, part of us wonders whether we should just go ahead and write a letter anyway. You know, just in case. I still know all of the reasons I don't believe in an Apple television. But I wonder if I should leave out some milk and cookies. <laughs> And that's how it was in the Magic Apple Kingdom over the last two weeks, boys and girls. Glad Thanksgiving's over. People constantly giving me the bird. Yeah, yeah, I know it's old. And vice versa. Thanks to Mac OS Ken for taking the time from producing his daily podcast to let us know what's on his mind. And don't forget, click on the link that says Ken Ray on the podcast page and subscribe to Day 6 because Ken needs the money to buy more space on Instagram. So, until next we meet, this has been your host, Victoria's Deepest Secret, reminding you to download, double-click, and drop out.